Thanks for everybody being here today, and it, it's an honor to be here uh, in front of the chambers. Thank you for having us. 96,000 residents, 250,000 to 450,000 folks here during the day and on the weekend. And these are the folks that are available currently to respond to incidents. So 35 on-duty firefighters, roughly 25 police officers, and about 350 or so public works personnel. So we're gonna be stretched very thin. And uh, in our environment today in Southern California and the fire service, we're very spoiled because within 15 minutes, I could probably have 100 engine companies here. Well, we won't have that opportunity in a large event because everybody's gonna be suffering. So one of the things that we like to share with our residents, with our visitors, with our guests, is that a lot of this is on you. It, it's on your family, it's on your business, and it's on you to make sure that you can take care of yourself for about 72 hours. Katrina took almost five days to get to some people. So having the kind of things that you think that you're gonna need for 72 hours. Just take a couple of hours and put it together. Medications, water, food, uh, a number outside of the state you can call so that your other family members can call just one place and find out if you're okay. A wind-up radio you can get on Amazon for 10 bucks. Uh, those are the kind of things you need to be thinking about. And a lot of our firefighters, we tell them the same thing. Make sure that you've got enough for your family because as soon as they're taken care of, you need to get back here and come to work. So we have, uh, to Lindsay's point, a pretty robust plan and it's a nationally adopted standard of how we're going to react in this type of situation. And it goes from the top down for us from the proclamation that we're gonna request of our city council to assure that we can be reimbursed. That's what that proclamation's all about. And there's several levels of that. Uh, the city manager's office to make policy level decisions about are we gonna open this or close that or are we gonna staff this or staff that policy level that's set by them. Uh, community and cultural services, one of our 13 departments in the city, are they responsible for the sheltering of our community should something happen. We have a number of sites we can use. We hope that this part of the Civic is still standing because this would be a pretty good one. That part of it is not so great. Uh, and then our information services to try to get communications back up because some of you may be partners with us and using some of the city's fiber network which is very robust. So I, I will tell you that over the past many years that the city has made continuous multi-million dollar capital investments in critical infrastructure in this community. Newer water lines. We own our own water system so we're not dependent on um, LA. We have an updated water treatment system. Most of our power is underground which is another big thing. A lot of our streets are in really good shape. We've retrofitted bridges. We've retrofitted a number of buildings. All of our fire stations are currently retrofitted with the exceptional one and we're rebuilding it right now on 7th Street. So there, there's a lot of investment that we've made to be a little bit more resilient. <coughs> so a lot of the comments that we get from some people is, hey, you'll just call for help, right? You'll just pick up the phone and get some more fire engines here. Well, let, let's talk about that reality. <clears throat> so the way this kind of works is we start calling for help. We kick it up to the county. The kick, they send it down to a center down in Riverside called South Ops. From there, it goes up to the state. From the state, it goes to the feds. I would imagine that the resources that would come here are going to come here from San Francisco, Oakland, Sacramento, Oregon, Utah, Arizona, Washington. So at the Thomas fire, we had nine different states represented there for that wildfire. And that brought 1,000 engines and over 10,000 firefighters to that incident. But it took a few days. That's a long drive in a fire engine. So plans are in place, and we actually use them frequently in this state for wildfires, and that's a good thing because we exercise the system frequently. But it's going to be days. 
The reality is, is that it's going to be days. And to the hospital point, the federal system has multiple mobile hospitals, including some that float that we would put offshore, but that is days. So uh, to hammer on the point, you're kind of on your own for 72 hours, and so is your business. And the more time you invest now in, up front, either assuring that building still stands, uh, is a, a value to your business, and the more you take some time to prepare yourselves and your family, the better off you're going to be. In 2018, we had kind of a busy year in California for fires. Now imagine this going on in a seven county area and then an incident happening, happening here for an earthquake. Now mutual aid in California is gone. It's already used. And now you're flying them in from states that are outside of our normal seven to nine western states. So I turn it over to Lindsay here, but uh, we need your help because we can't necessarily get to you right away. Uh, I was here for the 92 Northridge earthquake, and I was here, uh, I was in Santa Cruz for the 1989 Loma Prieta quake. And in 1973, I, told, I was told I was around during the Silmar quake. <laughs> so, um, but what I remember specifically about 89 is the, it was years of having empty holes in blocks in downtown Santa Cruz, and there's still some buildings not built. It was days before we were able to recover all of the victims that had lost their lives in the buildings. It was weeks before we restored power and water to communities. And so I think there's, there's, if there's a message to take home, take a little bit of time, go on our website, put together an earthquake kit, put together a plan, and it will, it will serve you well in the long run. So Lindsay?